Hey, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. My friend Paige is back. How you doing, Paige? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing okay. I am caffeinated. I am ready to uh, to talk about a hard one today. Uh, what What's on the plate? Well, with a lot of the stuff that just happened um, with the Roe versus Wade and the March for Life and everything, we're going to be talking about abortion today. All right. Let's talk about abortion today. So a lot of people kind of, when they think about abortion, all they think of is like the elective termination of a pregnancy. This person is so evil. They're killing their child. It's like, but that's, that's not quite the appropriate response. It's like, I understand where you're going with it because it's like, okay, yeah, it's wrong to kill a child. Always wrong to kill a child. Don't kill children. But like, that's not something that someone who is contemplating abortion needs to hear that they're a bad person, that they need, they need compassion. So I think it's a good thing to talk about like Hmm. the compassionate part of like women who are looking to have an abortion. Usually they're scared. They don't know, like maybe they don't have, they think that they don't have any monetary support for this child or they're not in a position where they think that they can properly care for a child so they think that the um, most I guess like humane thing for the child is for it to not be born and um, that's where you kind of really have to come in and recognize that hey this is a scary situation and these women need love and compassion Right. You, you talked about compassion. It's actually, it's interesting. We can talk about the, the science of it, that it's not even complex. Like if a mommy puppy and a daddy puppy love each other very much and have babies after getting married, they're going to have more puppies. And if, if a, a mommy person and a daddy person love each other very much after getting married, they're going to have a, a baby that it's a human being. But I think compassion is actually sort of the, the talk because what you're hoping is that the, the parents of this child would show their child compassion. And if you want to create compassion and somebody yelling at them might not be the best approach, like you should have compassion, but I don't need to because you're wrong, um, is maybe not sort of the, the best approach. And it's absolutely not one that, that talks about grace or mercy or forgiveness or offers any kind of peace to anybody who, you're right, might just be in a really tough situation that doesn't make it okay. But what they need then, what they need then might actually be compassion too. Yeah, because we we all get so quick on our high horse being like, I had never considered an abortion. I'd never have that. I can't believe you would ever think that that's a good thing. And that's not a very compassionate response. You want to also um, empathy is something that's definitely needed in a situation like this. You want to kind of say, okay, where is this person coming from? what is the thing in there obviously the baby is could be considered in this point like a stressor or what is going on and how can we help ease that and really support the person like we're not trying to tear them we don't want to tear them down by saying you're evil because you're considering this we want to be like okay you're considering this but why what can we do to help Right, because there should be a better option, and and if we can, we we want to try and be a part of that better option. Uh, when we when we talk about this, then um, it, it falls back on that same thing. We keep that that bell. We keep ringing. There's a difference between winning and helping. Um, winning is about you, and you might feel very good about yourself for for telling somebody they're making a bad choice, making an evil choice. Um, but if you're offering no help. Um, that's that's not compassion. That's quite frankly, that's not Christianity. Um, Jesus gives to us not only the, the answers of right and wrong, but the mercy for when we are ourselves wrong, either in heart or in deed. Um, when we when we get to then talk with people who are, are struggling with uh, the potential of terminating a pregnancy, of, 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 of having an abortion, uh, what if our approach then was not only simply rooted in what is real, but also to address some of those those fears. What are you afraid of and, and are there other options where you can where you can receive help? Definitely. And um, I think it kind of gets swept under the rug, but there are so many good organizations out there that will help women like 
everyone hears about Planned Parenthood and how they're supposedly there for the choice of the woman and everything, but I can't think of the last time I've heard Planned Parenthood and saving a baby in association with each other, but that's not, it's not really the point. The point is, is that Planned Parenthood isn't the only option. There's other, like, let them live or live action or hearts of hope or something like that's a local organization something like that where you can go and get maybe a second opinion if you've already been to Planned Parenthood or if you really know that this decision you want to keep the baby but you're feeling like you're back into a corner these places can help your church can help like there's so many different you I mean, it sounds really kind of nuanced, but Google it. There's always something around that you can really lean into the support of a community with other women who are going through the same thing and with people who are really out here to try and help and ease that burden and give you life and light and hope. And that's really what where we, we sort of come at this from. It's, it's, it's a question to us chiefly of, of hope, because if we're going to be honest, uh, abortion isn't a strictly Christian issue. Um, this, in fact, is, is is pretty unanimous. And when we sort of bind it just to Christendom and the Ten Commandments, you're going to lose sight of the fact that you don't need to be a Christian to sort of recognize that the taking of a life is is a wrong thing. Um, but but rather, we want to talk about hope. And so when when we cannot talk about hope as if Christ really has risen from the dead, as if we really are knit together as his body, the church, then then maybe first of all, there should be there should be peace and forgiveness for the people who have guilt and shame. There should be then a, 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 a place where the body of Christ is is not only knit together by Christ, but also then cares for itself. Yeah, and you can find that, like I said, in different organizations, they don't have to be religious organizations. Like you said, this isn't just a church problem or a religion problem. It's kind of a sin breaks stuff and sin is part of the world and it's a world problem. So just because you don't find support where you think you should find it doesn't mean that there's not a place that will offer you support. That's a good point. Is there anything else we want to kind of cover? Um, well, we do have to kind of talk about the men in the situation too, I feel like, because okay. a lot of times when you think about abortion, you think, oh, it's the woman making all these decisions. It, the man doesn't really have a say, even though like these are fathers. Mm -hmm. Like the, it's not just the woman saying, oh, I... I acted this way I want to terminate the pregnancy whatever life will go on as normal like there's a whole other like besides the baby being another person in this there's a whole other already living breathing human being not the babies aren't living and breathing but like outside of the womb human being that was involved in this and people are so quick to say oh men push women towards abortion because they just want to have their way and have fun with no consequences and that can be true but there what about the men who want that child who desperately are trying to help the mom make some other choice and I feel like that's something that gets swept under the rug a lot I think kind of in both cases uh we we sort of have lost the ability to speak about family as if it's a blessing. Um, this is maybe actually the, the place where our small catechism really starts to understand this. When it when it talks about the sixth commandment, it's not that there are uh, bad things that we shouldn't do uh, when it comes to adultery, when it comes to, to sexuality, but it's that first and foremost, we should understand that marriage is a good gift from God, that family is a good gift from God, that children are a good gift from God. Um, and, and when we start to understand that, then to the, the fathers who won't be fathers, we, we can actually say, why are you running from this it's actually a good thing and to those who actually you know want to to have this family that that is not given to them anymore we we have a place then to to have a conversation with the the entirety of the family the mother the father that that also involves the child that what if family was a good thing it's not always an easy thing we we have to acknowledge that and so that's why there is community to help families out um but if we can't first and foremost speak about family as a good thing, I understand why some people would run from it. Um, 
so so maybe even just sort of backing up and recognizing that this is an image of of mercy this is a picture of christ and the church this is a place where god wants to give good gifts even amidst trial and hardship even amidst sinners and and sometimes even amidst really painful and uncomfortable situations that don't have an easy solution but but if family is a good thing where god would actually use us uh his uh use us us his his people to to lift each other up to strengthen to forgive each other to to grant strength to each other it becomes a, a different kind of joy um when when children are called a blessing from the lord that that doesn't mean that you are now all of a sudden bound to get as many as possible but it also means that it's something we don't have to be afraid of or run from because god wants to work good here yeah and i think people lose sight of the god wants to work good like a child is a blessing they just see the child as a burden and it's a blessing for both mother and father so that's definitely something that really needs to be um, kept in mind and be mindful of when you're talking about abortion it's not just a one and done person, like one person made this decision, the other person isn't there. Like it's a whole family issue and it should be treated as such. And it should be treated again with compassion and with hope. Absolutely. Uh, let's end on that word, hope. Paige, thanks so much. Thank you.